This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Hobby Bosses USS Alaska, AFB Club's M113, Edwards BF110, Hasegawa's Nutcracker, and some choice airliner liveries. This episode of New Product Rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, the source for all your workbench storage needs. Welcome to the New Product Rundown. I'm Elizabeth Nash here with Aaron Skinner to show you inside the latest kits and accessories. Starting with Hobby Boss's 1 350th scale USS Alaska. This large cruiser has been on FSM's most wanted kit list as chosen by you guys, the readers, for several years. That popularity comes despite the fact that the Alaska was commissioned in June 1944 and decommissioned in February 1947. The ship's war career was spent screening U.S. carriers off Iwo Jima and supporting the landings on Okinawa. Despite several post-war efforts to convert the Alaska and its classmate, the USS Guam, the ship was surplus and scrapped in the 1960s. Alaska was a big ship. At more than 800 feet, it was longer than many contemporary battleships. The kit's 27-inch hull is a single piece with raised armor belting and open hoss pipes. The deck is split near the widest section of the superstructure, so there shouldn't be a lot of cleanup. There's good planking molded on the parts along with gun emplacements, hatches, and other fittings. Slide molding produces nice one-piece superstructure sections, many separated deck by deck like layer cake. These are the first two decks for the front tower. And more parts such as the base of the aft tower. Surface detail includes deep portholes, hatches, plumbing, and life rings. Other things above the decks include the smokestack with internal pipes and louvers, the superstructure and decks, bristle with anti-aircraft gun tubs, supporting ribs detail overhangs. The ship's armament looks terrific. The main guns, three turrets of three 12-inch cannons, comprise upper and lower halves, separate barrels with hollow muzzles, individual blast bags, and rangefinders. The secondary armament consists of 12 5-inch guns in six slide-molded turrets. The balance of the weapons are individual 20mm guns and a bunch of quad 40mm with two part bases and sharply molded barrels. Small parts such as anchors, prop shafts, boat racks, reel holders and more are delicate and will require a deft hand to remove them cleanly from the sprue. A basic stand is provided to display the ship. Two SC-1 Seahawks molded in clear plastic with separate props and wing floats are included. They sit on photo etched catapults. The same material is used for cranes, 20 millimeter gun shields, safety nets, and ladders. There's also a full set of railings, mass supports, and components, and the radar dish. Chain is given for the anchors. A small decal sheet provides national insignia for the planes, hull numbers for the ship, and flags. A five-view color diagram shows painting details for the Alaska in Measure 32 Design 1D Disruptive Camouflage. Hobby Boss baked a ton of detail and finesse into its big Alaska. Between the size and the multicolor camouflage, it will make an impressive display straight from the box. Next, AFE Club's 135th scale M113A1 ACAV. In the past, AFE Club has released a modified version of Academy's M113 as an Australian medium reconnaissance vehicle. This is not that kit. It's all new and represents the upgun armored cavalry assault vehicle developed in Vietnam. The lower hull is molded with armored sides and rear panel. Surface detail includes weld beads, bolts and mounting plates for the road wheel attachments, and mounting hulls for the fender skirts. The running gear consists of torsion bars extending across the hull and detailed road wheel arms and final drive covers. The wheels have detail molded on both sides and separate tires. Well molded one piece vinyl tracks come in the kit and metal rods reinforce the joints. There are plenty of hatches on the M113 and AFE Club supplies interior detail to be seen, including floor with molded diamond plate, seats for the crew, and troops. There are controls and instruments for the driver, and fuel tank, stowage racks, and radio in the back. The crew sections are separated from the engine compartment by detailed walls. The engine hatch on the front plate is movable, but no power plant is provided to fill the compartment. The engine grills are crisply molded. The top plate has detail outside and in, although the latter face shows some ejector pin marks that will need elimination. Optional fender skirts are included, and the forwarding plate is posable. Flotation cells can be fitted to the front. The loading ramp at the back is movable and features a separate two-part ramp door and molded tread inside. The commander's turret has separate upper and lower armor plates as well as the gun shield and hatch. That turret can be fitted with either a sharply detailed M250 caliber machine gun or an M134 minigun. The secondary guns mounted around the cargo hatch feature thin gun shields and beautifully molded M60s. The same sprue provides extra details including jerry cans, ammo boxes, and M16, M14, and M21 rifles, M14E2 light machine guns, and XM177 carbines. 
Clear plastic supplies periscopes and light lenses. Photo etched brass provides forwarding plate details and stowage straps. In addition to dials and placards for the interior, the decal sheet has markings for seven M113s, six in U.S. Army service, the other in Taiwanese. Approximately 80,000 M113s have been built and they've served in all corners of the globe and many conflicts since the 1960s. AFE Club's kit represents a Vietnam era APC right out of the box and should be the basis for many variants and conversions. Our third kit is Edward's latest 148th scale BF110, the F variant. The Czech company's gotten a lot of mileage out of its 148th scale 110s. This is at least the ninth version released and there have been numerous variations in terms of kit types along the way. This is the first time for the F. The major parts feature fine recessed panel lines and rivets on Edward's typical smooth plastic. The fuselage features a separate nose to show the detailed gun compartment. Which includes a floor and rear bulkhead, four machine guns, and ammunition and shell chutes. Under the cockpit is a pair of 20 millimeter cannons with ammunition drums. The well-appointed cockpit comprises front and rear floors, pilot seat, side console, instrument panel and controls, and side walls. The radio operator has a swiveling seat, racks of radios, rear-facing machine gun, or optional paired gun mount, and plenty of spare magazines. The ailerons are the only separate control surfaces. Detailed gear bays in the nacelles complement well-molded gear legs. Optional exhausts cover both standard and night fighter aircraft. And there's a sprue of underwing stores, although many are not used for this kit. BF-110s have a lot of canopy glass. The kit supplies optional parts to pose the cockpit open. Masks help keep all the panes neat. Color photo etch details instruments and harnesses. An unfinished fret has gun sights, radiator grills, and more, including the delicate nose antennas for the night fighter. Cartograph decals provide stencils and markings for five aircraft. Another fine Zestorer from Edward. Let's look at the latest machining Krieger kit from Hasegawa, a 135th scale PKH-103 nutcracker. This hover tank is used by the Stral Democratic Republic in its war with the independent-minded colonists on a post-apocalyptic Earth. A reissue, this is a large model, over a foot long. The bulk of the box is taken up with the hull and turret, and there's sharp molding that clearly reveals the source of the greeblies. There are plenty of parts to add to the hull, especially on the back deck. As well as underneath, with louvers for the propulsion system. Small parts like grab rails and antennas look scale thin and will add to the appearance of the model. Decals and diagrams describe eight marking options, all with a distinctly German World War II flavor, appropriate given the kit's label as Kampfgruppe Bulk. These MAK kits are a lot of fun and give you a ton of leeway in finishing. Finally, here are some really nifty airline livery decals from Decalus Global, given to us by Joy Decals at the IPMS USA National Convention. Produced in Mexico, the sheets feature sharp outlines and good registration. A quick look at Joy Decals website reveals that Decalus Global has a wide selection of liveries to choose from. These six 1144 scale sheets are among the newest offerings, starting with a sheet close to FSM's home, Air Wisconsin BAE 146200s. The sheet includes windows, doors, stencils, pedos, and a variety of registration numbers and letters. The next sheet is an Air Florida 737200, specifically in 62 AF, the aircraft that crashed into the Potomac River shortly after takeoff on January 13, 1982. In addition to full striping for Air Florida's striking scheme, the sheet has cargo hatches, pedos, and stencils. Fans of Lockheed's TriStar will dig the next sheet for TAP Air Portugal L1011s. It has registrations and ship names for six TAP TriStars. Windows and doors are on a separate sheet. Then there's this colorful sheet for a single 737-300, operated for about a year by now-defunct Brazilian regional carrier Puma Air. Two styles of windscreen are included on the sheet. Continuing a colorful animal theme, we have a sheet for Philippine low-cost carrier Cebu Pacific DC-930s. The airline operated several of the aircraft over the years, and the sheet includes a matrix of numbers to show optional registrations. The sixth option also features wildlife. A bird of paradise is seen on Air New Guinea Fokker F-100s. The sheet provides livery and stencils for a single aircraft. All of the sheets are screen printed but have continuous clear coat so they will require careful trimming before application. But there are plenty of choices. Look for builds of the Alaska and M113 in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler Magazine. And you can see more new products in the September issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Aaron Skinner. And I'm Elizabeth Nash. We'll see you next time. And there's sharp molding that clearly reveals the source of the greeblies. <laughs> <laughs>
$25. It's cheap at any price. I can get you a signed copy.